Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Murray and Vice Chair Collins for your leadership in ushering bipartisan appropriations bills through the committee again this year. And I also want to thank uh, Senator Capito uh, uh, for your approach and collaboration in developing this bill before us. The Labor HHS bill includes a modest increase over last year that allows us to address bipartisan priorities and pressing needs facing families and communities across our country. Our bill addresses kitchen table issues I hear about every day from Wisconsinites. It increases investments in child care for working families, research to discover life-saving cures for deadly diseases, prevention and treatment efforts to curb the fentanyl and substance use epidemic, mental health care, helping people get the skills and tools that uh, they need to uh, land family-supporting jobs and support for students and educators, among others. These are bipartisan priorities that this committee has consistently supported. These invest investments help address the issues that all of our constituents are grappling with. Everywhere I travel in my state, I hear constant concerns about the high cost of and lack of access to childcare. We can and must do more for families, businesses, and childcare providers. Our bill includes a combined $2.3 billion increase for early learning programs, including a $1.6 billion increase for the Child Care and Development Block Grant and a $700 million uh, increase for Head Start. When parents cannot find quality, affordable child care, it hurts families, businesses, and our economy. It, de it deprives kids of consistent early learning opportunities. It means parents have to miss work or drop out of the labor force altogether. It means businesses can't find the skilled workforce they need. More needs to be done to fix our broken child care system. But this bill will help states ensure more working families have access to quality child care, including by supporting providers operating on razor-thin margins, particularly those in rural and underserved areas. Our bill also includes an increase of more than $2 billion for NIH to support life-saving research. Every American is affected by disease in their lifetimes, either uh, themselves personally, or a loved one. This bipartisan bill bolsters research to deliver the treatments and cures to help them. It includes $958 million to fully restore funding for the Cancer Moonshot, the Brain Initiative, and all of us research programs. This will support research with the goal of cutting can the cancer death rate by at least 50% over the next 25 years, accelerating our understanding of the human brain and the development of neurotechnologies to help treat diseases of the brain, and advancing preci precision medicine. It includes $275 million uh, increase for mental health research, a $275 million increase for Alzheimer's disease research, a $266 million increase for cancer research, and a $130 million increase for the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and a $76 million increase for the Office of Research on Women's Health a $20 million increase for research on maternal mortality, and a $10 million increase for opioid research. While our country continues to grapple with deadly poisonings and overdoses from fentanyl, we boosted our investment in programs that are helping our communities save lives. The bill includes a $215 million increase for substance use and mental health service programs that provide critical support for those struggling with substance use disorders and mental health challenges. In the first two years of operation, the 988 Suicide Prevention Lifeline has answered 10 million calls, chats, and texts. As the co-author of the bill to establish 988, that is both encouraging as well as a distressing sign of the number of individuals, especially youth, seeking crisis care. 
The bill includes an increase of $20 million for 988 to ensure someone is on the other end of that call and additional funding to increase our behavioral health workforce and expand access to mental health care, including a $10 million increase for the mental health crisis response grants. I'm also proud that our bill invests in our students and workers. With an ever-changing economy, getting the skills and tools to meet the job market looks different as well. Our bill tar includes targeted increases to career and technical education and apprenticeships that provide pathways to good paying jobs and careers. Our legislation also invests in foundational elementary and secondary education programs, such as the Title IA and IDEA formula grants, and boosts the maximum Pell Grant award to help support students in post-secondary education. Given the breadth of issues important to both Democrats and Republicans that are covered in this bill, I could really go on and on. It strengthens our pandemic preparedness and biodefense programs, including helping ensure critical elements in our uh, public health supply chain are made in America. It allows for more frequent nursing home inspections and will mean that Social Security can provide better service for the tens of millions of Americans that rely on it and have earned their benefits. I am proud of the investments that we are able to make in this bill. These investments will make the lives of our constituents better so that they can live healthy, fulfilling lives. But to be clear, I'm disappointed that we weren't able to do more. Women's health and reproductive rights are under attack in this country. Women are being denied the right to control their bodies, families, and future, while putting their health and well-being at risk. This will not be fixed in an appropriations bill, but we should do more, including increasing fam funding for family planning and other critical programs. This bill is very much a compromise that was developed in a fully bipartisan manner. It is in stark contrast to the House, passed, or the House Labor HHS bill. The partisan approach of the House leads to constant threats of government shutdown that do nothing but waste time and resources. That's a disservice to Wisconsinites and, a com and communities across the country that rely on services funded in this bill. This is a bill that we can, that this is a bill that can and should be passed by the Senate, passed by the House, and signed by the President. Finally, I want to thank the staff who helped put this bill together. Even before pencils went down on fiscal year 2024 appropriations in March, these staff members were already hard at work on this bill. That includes uh, my staff on the majority, Amanda Beaumont, Aaron Dugan, Janie Delaney, Mike Gentili, Mark Leish, Claire Montero, Megan Mott, Catherine Tumajan, and Senator Capito's staff on the minority, Ashley Palmer, Tom Pfeiffer, Lindsay Seidman, and Emily Slack. I also want to thank all of the other staff on the committee and at GPO and CBO who have really worked around the clock to get us to this point. This is a good bill, and I'm proud to have my colleagues' support for it.